Yeah, yeah. So Vince, have you heard the latest Magic the Gathering discourse? Secret Lairs? Overpriced Magic the Gathering product. Warped foils? They didn't reprint the needed reprint. Needed reprints in Secret Lairs that are overpriced? Magic Arena. Commander has a ban list. Commander, sometimes you lose at Commander. Often you lose at Commander. Sometimes you win at Commander. Magic the Gathering players are difficult. Gaia's Cradle, put it onto a planeswalker. They do that? No. Wizards of the Coast made an oopsie. A stream announcing something that no one wanted. A stream making a problem worse. A um, whoopsie poo poo PR problem. Again. <laughs> Monkeys in every format. They're everywhere. It costs too much. Five color commanders, every set. There's a problem. They banned one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bet they banned another. Right. Magic the Gathering organized play. Prize support. Support for the local game store. Spending time on ladder? But why? Magic the Gathering on Amazon. Card stock quality. Opening a pack of magic cards and they're already damaged? They made a new product, but they didn't ship it to anywhere. Love your game store, but only one in the country, if you're lucky. <laughs> they made a new product, but they didn't actually print it. You can't get it, but you want it. Sucks to be you. Direct to consumer, print on demand, but also artificially scarce. Double Masters 4 at four times the price. Crossover with a TV show no one cares about? The list. Crossover with a TV show that some of us care about. Set boosters. Does anyone remember draft boosters? Collectors boosters, they're $25 each. Reprinting the cards we wanted to reprint in our secret lair, but only one in every eight packs of a particular booster type. The fantastic novelty of the list but it's only sometimes. Wizards of the Coast, foot and mouth syndrome. Oh, it actually makes it like there isn't that many problems. <laughs> of course there is. How can we talk about it all the time? New digital only format. Fixing a broken card, but you're not allowed a refund for the one you bought. Who are you talking to? Alchemy. Historic. Arena economy. $50 for quarter of a standard deck that you can't trade in. Brawl. Do people play Brawl in paper at all? No, it's called Commander. No Commander on Arena, suckers. Decidedly masculine love interests. Canceling VIP access to the new Arena set the day before when everyone took time off work already. No idea for a dice to removal skit. Smash cut to opening credits. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Dice to Removal. We're finally doing the Warhammer episode. We're going to talk about popular IPs no, in no, popular no. culture. Well, well, War I don't want to talk about Warhammer. I don't know anything about Warhammer. You said we're going to talk about a really successful uh, multimedia franchise that is both part science fiction and fantasy that is making lots of money. Magic the Gathering. Huh. <laughs> Interesting you. Okay. Do you think we're not making lots of money? We're making lots of money. I, th I think the, the, the multimedia aspect is a little bit lacking, shall we say. Yes. Whatever did happen to the Magic the Gathering movie? Uh, Zac Efron turned it down. Uh, there was not the last rumor. Today's episode is about the intellectual property of magic and whether or not it's being utilized by Wizards of the Coast in a way that is... I don't want to say successful because they're already successful, right? They don't right. need to necessarily do this stuff to make money. Well, there's a difference between Wizards of the Coast is making money on Magic the Gathering, which they are, versus Wizards of the Coast is successfully utilizing the Magic the Gathering IP or yeah, intellectual yeah. property. In other words, we've been seeing a lot of intellectual properties come to Magic the Gathering through universes beyond, but isn't it strange that as much as Wizards is excited to bring Warhammer intellectual property and Stranger Things and The Walking Dead and uh, Legends of Runeterra. That's no, an no, interesting no, it was one. Arcane, no, no, Arcane. Arcane. Isn't which that, is, is part is, of the wider intellectual property of League of Legends. League of Legends, but isn't Le Legends of Runeterra... Runeterra is also League of League Legends. Of Le it's a different intellectual property. No, it's the same intellectual property. So League of Legends. But, 
It, yes. Yes. And no. It's that's a good example of it, though, right? Like, but Lee, why doesn't a, anyone want to bring Jace in? Why isn't Warhammer making Jace miniatures? Or why isn't? Yeah, it's an interesting point. Why in Stranger Things wasn't there a scene of? Well, it takes place before it, but it would be the equivalent of there's a scene in Stranger Things where the kids are playing Magic: The Gathering. Maybe it flashes forward to the '90s. Maybe we have a flat time travel flash forward, and they're playing the Magic the at a table. The fourth season is coming. You never know. Yeah, fourth season is coming. They'll be the '90s by then. But nonetheless, why aren't we seeing? A Magic the Gathering movie. They've been talking about that forever, and then it died, and then it's a Magic the Gathering TV series. It's coming to Netflix. Mm -hmm. It's got a Game of Thrones writer attached. Oh, he dropped out. It's got the guys from Marvel attached. Oh, they dropped out. Yeah. It's never I mean, going to come. You know that. So, and when it does, it won't be as good as Arcane. So the TV show might still be on the horizon, right? Because recently they actually had like Brandon Ruth in like a, a ad spot on one of the weekly streams. I'm like, hi guys, I'm voicing Gideon. That's that's one of the former people who played Superman. If you're not aware, Gideon's dead. Uh, not in the show, he's not. Are you not aware of this? The show is about Jason Gideon. Oh, I'm really <laughs> glad we're... Uh, and, and how decidedly good friends they are. Yeah, so this is this is another thing, right? Yes. Like, the show's key art image to reveal it was Chandra on a black background for a right. Netflix logo. And then we hear nothing for like a year. And they're like, right, it's about Jason Gideon. Like, oh, that's, that's a strange... I did not hear it was about Jason Gideon. Yeah, so Gideon is voiced by Brandon Ruth, a former Superman. Okay. Or maybe he's Jace. He's one of them. I'm pretty sure he's Gideon, though. And when I, when I heard that, I was like, so we're just going to... Okay, so we're now... We're pre-War the Spark. Maybe they're going to build up to War the Spark. Maybe, you know I mean, they don't have to say it in the modern day magic as it were pretty stupid but it is pretty stupid and also if you told me of the pantheon of characters we had who'd you pick i'm like oh yeah jason gideon like it's right. just not not exciting is it but milk, that show, milk like, and toast <laughs> yeah. they picked milk and toast i didn't want to say that but i'm they sorry did. to gideon people <laughs> fans i'm sorry to jace fans but yeah, it's I'll interesting. I'll apologize to Gideon fans. You apologize to Jace fans. I'm not apologizing to Jace fans. To Gideon fans, I'm sorry. He's totally Captain America of magic, and he's awesome. Now you apologize no. to Jace fans. No, absolutely not. Sorry, Jace fans. Oh, no! What? No! Ooh, my, hashtag my, got him! My hashtag delicate, got him! My delicate British sensibilities put a sorry before I said no. <laughs> oh, that is really strange. That's your, some Canadian heritage. The show is coming, tree. right? Yeah. The show is coming, and I don't think it's going to be good. And that's going to be a massive disappointment, because Arcane was really good. How come they could do Arcane and do it good? And also, how come they could do Arcane before Magic the Gathering has been around longer than League of Legends? How come League of Legends was not only able to get a show up on Netflix before Magic the Gathering, but... It's amazing. I love it, and I don't play League of Legends. Yeah. The show's so well done on all levels, and I mean, maybe we're just pessimists. Old men shout at clouds Imagine on this Imagine a channel, world, but... though, where the show comes out and it's as good as Arcane. Imagine if that happened. Imagine... It would be huge for the and, game. And that's the point, right? The, so, so we're saying, this is a good point to round out that intro, is that they make tons of money, but if they if they had a show like Arcane, can you imagine how good that would be for onboarding new people, getting right. kids interested? It would be huge. So like some people probably sat already in the comments like, who cares? They still make the card game. But like having an expanded universe, having an expanded multimedia portfolio, to some use like jargon, is nothing but good. Right. So why the on earth do we not see it? It's also good. I want to point out that it's not just about us rooting for the success of the game and expanding the game. It's good for the people playing the game because if it's good, it makes you happier to play the game. Remember when you were happy to play Magic? When you had confidence in playing Magic? Or where you were just obsessed with Magic? Wasn't that the greatest feeling when it was like, I remember when we would see this shot of a new planeswalker, Tamiyo, the moon says, she's from Kamigawa and she's on Innistrad. I remember that big reveal. Everyone lost their minds. We still get elements of that ever so slightly. But like, but Tamiyo is a good example, right? The recent completion of Tamiyo got a lot of people's a, was attention. Was such a cool story beat. Imagine if if that had remember. Did you see that uh, uh, short uh, uh, anime style thing they did for new uh, a, a new dynasty? I keep wanting to say new destiny. Neon dynasty. I wanted neon neon new new neon destiny. Not New Capenna, New Neon Capenna. Dynasty. Ah, for the, the Kamigawa. Yeah. They sh that should have been a show. That should have been every week, and it should have been building up to Tamiyo completed, where, where as it's being revealed, cards are being revealed simultaneously. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then in the season finale, we see a completed Tamiyo. It fades to, it says, fades to black to be continued, and then the Tamiyo card appears on screen. Yeah. And people would be rushing to the local game store, and if that was like the night before pre-release, and they'd kept the whole set under wraps, Sort of thing. Yeah. It would have been epic. Are you, are you, well, this is just conjecture here, but similar thing. Even if you don't see the card, it's like Tamio will return in, and we get the new set name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of like they do at the end of all the Marvel Ta movies. Tamio will return in Dominaria, 
completed. Yes. Have you talked about it on the channel yet? Your third so theory. there was a really good. No, not to get too not, far not off your of this, theory, but this is why theory, this yeah. this this is why that expanding the IP and having a healthy television show, movie, comic book series. I do think they have a healthy. I think the comic, the Boom comics, are amazing. I'm so excited for them. I'm doing content They're on them. Cool theory, Thirst. I love that theory. Well, it's not my theory. I wish I thought of it. <laughs> I it's wish so I good, thought of this. Though. Reddit user, I don't know who. Maybe Put it on we'll, screen now. Maybe it's on it. screen. Reddit user, this had the coolest idea, which is Dominaria United. That doesn't make any sense. It's Dominaria. They're going to pull a, 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 a new Phyrexia on us because originally they were like, oh, the third set's called Mirrodin Pure. The Mirrodins beat off Phyrexia. And then it's like, no, it's new Phyrexia. Well, the third set, uh, uh, the, the Dominaria set is not Dominaria United. It's not United, it's completed. They're united in that they are all one I with love Phyrexia. that because the name is dumb. And so that's what our return to Dominaria is gonna be. Dominaria is conquered by the Phyrexians who now have interplanar capabilities and are figuring out more stuff and getting planeswalkers. And basically it, 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 we are gonna see the fall of Dominaria, but the next set is Brothers War. Karn is gonna travel back in time and some aspect of the Brothers War, which is when Phyrexia first started to do its incursion into Dominaria, they completed Mishra uh, and all of this, and Karn is going to try and fix the future by going back to the Brothers War. And that is also our link as to why are we seeing the Brothers War again? It's because there's also a storyline connecting to the present. So we both get to relive and experience Urza and Mishra and the Brothers War, but there's also this big thing. Whoever you are out there in Reddit, you, you have the first really good idea ever posted to Reddit. Congratulations. But how sick does that sound, though? Yeah, that and sounds how, really sick. And how cool would that be if it was, like, all set up through uh, multimedia snippets? So we have a bit of this. We have the short stories in the Mothership. We have a comic book series that's ongoing. The comic book series is amazing. You should check it Where out. Where is it? I'm, uh, absolute hands yeah. up. I, ha I keep meaning to read the comics. I have not. Where is it set in Magic's canon? What is it? Because it's Chandra. The comic book series is set outside of Magic's canon in the same way Gideon is alive in the Netflix series, and it uh, might just be... Okay. Earth multiverse number 542. The comic books, so like in the comic books, but that's what makes it so good. Dude, I'll say this right now. The comic books are, are start with Merit Lage invading Ravnica. Really? Yes. How f cool is that? It's, it's the sort <laughs> of cool no stuff. Idea. Isn't that wild? Yeah. And it's the cool stuff uh, it's the cool stuff that they, they're too scared to do in the main storyline because they're like, oh, people wouldn't know who Merritt Ladge is and and stuff like this. And it, it's also but the you're stuff telling me that I'm, to I am do. now going to read it. Yeah. I will read it. There you go. See? And and the, I'm I'm going to give you one more spoiler, no more. But okay. the first little part ends with uh, uh, basically uh, Merritt Ledge invades Ravnica and destroys House Demir, and it's the fall of House Demir. Huh. It's so, and she's taking over uh, Ravnica and uh, Jace dies and doesn't come back. No. Yep. Abs you're pulling my leg. I'm not. They it's killed an Jace? awesome, yep. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that's very early on. Yeah, very early that's on. Quite, and it goes on past that. It's so awesome. But that's brave. And again, that, so that's them telling different stories in a different canon, if you will. Yeah. And you can tell all sorts of stories if you're willing to kill off a character in one and not the other. This is why comic books are so great because they have this like vast interconnected mm, web. Mm, comics, check them out. Yeah, yeah. So that's the one thing they're doing well. And look at how excited, and this is my point going back to it, is look at how excited this jaded old man, this incredibly cynical, I'm incredibly not putting it on, bad by the way. attitude. I'm not putting it on Everybody knows it's just negativity, negativity out of so-called pleasant Kenobi. And he got this little grin on his face just by hearing Merritt Ladge, a reference to his youth. That's why it's good for the game. So imagine a TV series game, people to be happy and excited about magic. Imagine a, no a series of novels you were telling me, now I want you to tell all of them what you're telling me over sure. coffee, about what Warhammer has 52 novels just on their equivalent of the Brothers War. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's this story and why, and imagine how cool something like this would be In the magic. absolute shortest way possible, because mm. I can talk about this for hours. There's a thing called the Horus Heresy in okay. Warhammer. And Horus Heresy was a footnote in the in the in the in the rule book saying at some point the emperor of mankind was injured and he was put into a tomb and a bad thing happened called the Horus Heresy and for like twenty years people were like what is it and every new rule book gives a little bit more tidbit of how it happened who Horus was how he rose to power and stuff like that and eventually the demand for it became so big they decided to okay we'll do a little novel series we have the Horus Rising and and a few other books that tell the story of Horus rising to become a force that then attacked his own people the, yeah. the human civil war. 
And then that, sp that spiraled into 52 books explaining the origins of all the superheroes of Warhammer, the, the guys who started the Space Marines. So you've got every character's got their own book, every legion's got their own book, 52 books. There's 52 more books of the final battle, the Siege of Terror, Earth under, under conflict. And this then spawned its own game system, which is like a Warhammer about 10,000 years earlier, Warhammer 30k. Mm -hmm. It spawned its own card game that then went on to inform and change how a faction like the Custodes looked in Warhammer. And it's just huge. New York Times best-selling books and this sort of stuff. It, is, are you joking? It really no. hit the New York Times bestseller? Yeah, multiple books in Horace Rising are New York Times bestsellers. Wow. They're some of the most popular science fiction out there at the moment. And this is like, people are saying like, if they ever do a Warhammer movie, for Warhammer 40K might not even be the thing. They go to this Horace Rising, this depth, which is their brother's war. Meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, this is what we got. In all fairness, in all fairness to these, and well, not to these, but to, to, Warhammer has other stinkers as well. Yeah. They release like two books a week. Right. Like it's insane. The, the Black Library, a separate company set up by Games Workshop, released two books a week, roughly, maybe even more. Why can't Wizards of the Coast do that? I don't know. Why? I don't understand why they can't do that. I guess the reception of these, due to critics online giving them bad reviews by it. It's not my fault that they're like, oh, it turns out Chandra doesn't like girls. Like it's not that's it's like it, that's not my fault. But there was that. I did not call. I did not create yes, that problem. Correct. But let's be even-handed. There were some good books recently. Right? I didn't read the World of Quest. Uh, but that was mixed reviews. I was in the uh, minority. Dull surprise there in that I actually liked it and a lot of people did not. And that was that was after this, wasn't it? But Thrones again, I think that's a great example of why you make a lot of them because then I go, oh, I really liked. That, that novel, and other people said I didn't like that one, but you make a bunch of them, and people are gonna have their favorites. And again, you maybe have a hit on your hand, like this Horus Heresy hoopla, and uh, this is all good for the game. But people and it's find, a, people find, like you said, people find the thing they like. Right. So like the fact that there are two books a week for Warhammer, and the Horus Heresy has one book for each of the big Primark characters, is that some people associate with one more than the other. Somehow Commander is popular because you, you kind of live your main character. Same with League of Legends does this. Just take 140 characters, find the one you associate yeah. with and read their background lore or whatever, watch the short cartoons and CGI and animations they make. That would be great for Magic as well. You've got your right. legendary card. Imagine you've been playing the Commander for three or four years and like this week is the story of... Um, um, Sig River Guide, the novel. Yeah, or the dog and the cat. I can't remember the names of, but people like. How would there be a novel about a dog and a cat? Have you not... Mate, there's movies about dogs and cats. Have you never seen... Milo and Otis. Dogs and Cat. There's a movie called literally called Dogs and Cats. There is not a movie literally Comment called Comment section Dogs below, and tell us your favorite dog and or cat movie. No, no, dog and cat. Can't be dog and or cat. Tom and Jerry. I know that's not a dog and a cat. <laughs> there's gotta be a dog in Tom and Jerry, right? Tom, neither Tom nor Jerry is a dog. Yeah, but there's a tangential dog. There's a dog in the periphery. There was a human in one episode. It doesn't like... No, it's only the lower legs of the human. I believe the humans of the Tom and Jerry universe do not have upper body. <laughs> anyway, anyway, anyway. I just touched upon the CGI thing, right? It's something I want to mention when we talk about Water Spark. Right. Water Spark had the best preview season ever. And I it mean did. that because we had sequential spoilers, including story beats within the card, showing the toppling of the statues, the invasion, the fight up to it, Gideon's sacrifice, spoilers. And then we got the trailer drop at the end of it. And the, and trailer, the trailer was amazing. Yeah, whether you don't like the musical choices or whatever, you can't dispute that that is a great piece of Why media. couldn't the trailers keep up at that level? Then Because they, they we to... had three, right? Throne, War, and uh, we had an Ikoria one with, um, I don't give a damn about my reputation with a bow and stuff. That one was not very good. I didn't think it was as good as the other two. It wasn't as bad. It, was, it, it wasn't as bad as the Strixhaven one where it was like finger puppets or something. Do you remember the Strixhaven? I didn't Haven see trip? that. It was so bad. I, I was watching that Strixhaven and I'm sorry, again, I know that we get into this territory where when we're being critical of art and it's something like, you know, a, a, a trailer or or some an ad like essentially. Someone has made this. Someone has made it. And also some people really enjoyed it, but I was just, I, I was, I was, was a I finger was, puppet one? yeah, it was, I was, it was literally, it was like Terrence and Philip from South Park style. <laughs> Why would you want to join Silver Quill College? I have calculated the perfect equation that will demonstrate why Quandrix College is the best choice by 32.675%. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, whatever. Uh... Uh, uh, animation, their heads were like going So you're like telling this. me that Strixhaven isn't Harry Potter, but the trailer for it used the Harry Potter butt finger puppet like meme. No, 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 it wasn't finger puppets. It was animated like Terrence and Philip on oh, South Park. Oh, okay, okay. And it was okay. literally like, hi, I'm from, you know, Quandrix College, and oh boy, here we go, boom. And it was just ridiculous. It was like something for, it was, I, I, I was 
just seeing the War of the Spark trailer replay in my mind as I'm watching Terrence and Philip present Strixhaven without the fart jokes. Fart jokes would have made it a lot livelier. Like, it was honest to God that, and but, I was but, just, but, who thought this in up? In all fairness, though, I'd like them to, ex experimentation is good. The Calderheim had a CGI one that was good, too, with Tibalt walking through the, uh... <laughs> I didn't like it. Oh, okay, well, I, I did, and I want them to see more of that. Have we had them since then? Is no, we didn't. And then had a small one. We had a, someone sat on a, a, a ledge. Oh, right, right. Kamigawa one was pretty cool. It was like uh, the raccoon person yeah. and this. Well, and Because like League but does this. But it was this... nothing compared to War of the Spark no, trailer. No, and League does this a lot. League will just drop these for like a new mastery pass thing is coming out on the client that you can buy into to get your experience points, these yeah. stupid currencies and stuff like Arena has. And it'll be like, but here's a full on CGI trailer for it in their new outfits and stuff. And you're like, that is cool. It's cool to bring the world to life. I Seeing don't know the move who in is in life charge so of, of the advertising at Wizards of the Coast for Magic, but it's so scattershot, so hit and miss, and so weird too, where like some of these things they do where there was like Patton Oswald and, and I love Patton Oswald, but Patton Oswald in an escape room and, and trying to get out of the escape room with, with some is. other, yeah. This was an ad for, <laughs> I don't even remember which set. That's how effective it was. And it was just ridiculous. It's like him and some d and I think it was the D&D &D set maybe, and it was some other D&D &D personalities. Oh, I have They were seen trying that. to escape this room. And, and it's like, what is this? How is this getting anybody wanting to play the game? The War of the Spark trailer got people to want to play the game. How is that getting people wanting to play yeah. the game or getting people who play the game excited about it? It had nothing to do Imagine with magic. Imagine if we had a CGI trailer of like Dritz doing this thing or, yeah. any of the big, or like any of the big characters we had. Like Min Minsk. Min it's Min almost like they're embarrassed of Magic the Gathering, but that's but that another was story. That was D&D though. Yeah, but it's like they're embarrassed of Magic the Gathering. So let's get Patton Oswalt and uh, 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 Danny... Uh, uh, Danny Trejo. Yeah, in. And I get it. Like, I, I don't know. It's, it's just such a poor use of all of this stuff that they have. So that's the media aspect. That's the, the narrative and the trailers and the animations and the coming TV show and movie that's not happening. But the thing you touched upon at the beginning that we also need to talk about is that magic, you 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 call it advertisements. I don't necessarily agree completely with that, with the advertising The Walking Dead and Street Fighter and mm -hmm. Stranger Things. So I think it's cool to have those things come to magic. I, I'm growing much warmer to it over time. But you are right that we don't get to... I need you to stop there. If it's not an ad, how come it came out right when the new season of The Walking Dead was about to premiere and then the new season of Stranger Things and then the new Street Fighter? They are literally oh, timed up. releases oh, to sure, advertise sure. for those products. It isn't just- That's called cross-pollination of brands, Brian. No, but it isn't just that. It literally is coming out as an ad for the new thing coming out. It isn't just that they did a Street Fighter secret I think it's intend it is intended to be that way. It's very funny that it doesn't quite line up though. Like the Stranger Things trailer dropped four or five weeks after the secret letter. The, the Street Fighter one did line up pretty well. Yeah. And then Walking Dead, people were like, hang on, the season doesn't, st like it was a really weird spot for it, but that might just be incompetence more so than anything else. Yes, but I'm, I'm sorry, go on. I just, yeah. I just feel like it's like you're buying, it's an ad for Street Fighter and it's cool, I get it, but it's also like, why isn't there a, a Street Fighter and you select Jace as your fighter? That would be ridiculous. They would never want to do that. Yeah, yeah. They, they wouldn't, what? what Because this was one of the big a ones. A Jace of, Warhammer Yeah, figure. this is the big one for Warhammer. I spoke to loads of different Warhammer creators when I was at an event and I was telling them, what's going on with the Warhammer cards? They're all really quite excited. So right. it shows that it works because they're like, oh, maybe I'll pick up this magic stuff. It does work, right? It does work. And I'm like explaining it, and they're like, oh, that seems cool. Why is everyone upset? And I'm like, okay, hypothetical. You're you're playing Warhammer 40K, it's at the 40,000th year in the future. And um, a portal opens up, and some wizards come out with some goblins there. And there's Fibblethip, and he's this one-eyed little golem thing. He's like, Golem? Well, what is he, a homunculus? Yeah. A homunculus thing, golem. This is so different. They're both artificial constructs, aren't they? Aren't they both created? They there right. you go, there's the logic. You can't, my brain is so huge. My mind is so expanded, you can't keep up. Anyway, and some of them were like, oh, I wouldn't care, but I feel like they were, they were saying that. Others were like, no. No, no, because 40K, thanks to its rich lore, its back history of books, the Horus Heresy, people are militant, and I use that term literally, militant about how important the lore is. We can't have female space marines because that's not what it says in the books, that sort of stuff. We don't get that defense in magic, maybe that's a good thing in some ways, because there isn't that much lore to defend. Because yeah. a lot of it is kind of just like shoehorn under the rug. So you are right. Warhammer players do not want to see Jace come out of a portal and be a model. Although GW models are pretty good. I would love to see some Games Workshop, a Nico Boras, a Kiki Jiki. That would right. be actually really cool. But we don't. No, we don't. We can't even get 
Hasbro owns Magic the Gathering and Hasbro owns Monopoly and we can't even get a Magic the Gathering Monopoly. Imagine if it's like, I'm going to buy Kamigawa Place. I would buy that. Yeah. I, I hate Monopoly and I'd buy Yeah, it. and as you've got a little Jace figure, you've got a Nicol Bolas figure. A little pewter Stormcrow, just one that of the characters. That would be hilarious. I that think that would be, be quite hilarious. clever. Yeah, yeah. But, but we do have this happening in D&D. They own both. They do, and I have, some of the, I have some of those books up and there. And the books are good, they're not perfect. I'm I, I'm a big stat block fan in D and D, so sure. I was upset not to see all the gods started out. I thought yeah, Theros had like two legendary creatures started out. Yeah. But anyway, besides the point, I think they're pretty good. Yeah. And I wish we, but even then we don't see them. Like people have been asking for the Innistrad one, the Zendikar one. We got like right. little online PDFs, not the books. Right. So even that's not quite integrated fully. Yeah. <laughs> Yet we had an entire D and D set. <laughs> I'm really surprised too in this day and age with computer games and everything. Yeah, we've got Magic Arena but there was a really popular game uh, called Chandelar, made by one of my favorite old game companies, Microprose, who made Master of Orion, which I was a big Master of Orion and Master of Orion 2 fan. Yeah, no, I don't. Early, um, early Civ as well, Microprose. I'm not sure on that one. Okay. So tell okay. us in the comments. But they made this game called Chandelar, and it was amazing. It isn't quite Magic the Gathering. It was kind of more of an adventure uh, exploration thing, but you used Magic the Gathering cards in a logical way. It's a great playthrough. I believe some super fans of it even tried to, or not tried, succeeded in updating some of the cards so that you could play it and use different cards. There was some kind of fan edit of it. This game still holds up today. If you have any way to play it and haven't, you should check it out. But it's amazing that we don't have the equivalent of the new Chandelar on Steam for people to download where again that's advertising for magic and you're playing yeah. with magic cards in the game and why don't we have uh chandelar 2020 so like and that's weird right because D, D is hasbro and wizards and D, &D has a lot of video games we right. had like three last year like the Baldur's gate one bombed um sorry the dark alliance one bombed Baldur's gate three was critically acclaimed we keep seeing this happen but magic we've had like legends which came and went before leaving beta, mm -hmm. it died. And I did videos on how I was like, I got a preview card for that of a spell. And I, in the preview, I'm like, this looks unfinished. And it was you unfinished don't need to brag and about never that. got finished. That wasn't a brag. That was me showing my, my journalistic integrity, okay. you pointed out. Yes. Anyway, so that died. And then we had, I guess, Jewel, before that, Jewels of the Planeswalkers, which at one point they had a microtransaction and killed off. Yep. And then we had uh, Battlegrounds in 2003 on the Xbox. Oh, uh,. Yeah, uh, uh, and the Legends. Legends was the, what I'm talking about, the action thing. That was, that was last year that died. Yes. Legends, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Legends is the most recent, died. A load of like light arena variants, which isn't really a video game. Yeah. Where's our game? Where's an adventure mystery thing with Jace? Where right. is the thing where it's an adventure mystery? It even transforms the magic when you're going through battle thing. Like turn-based Final Fantasy games are popular. You can, you can do so much stuff. So much. Uh, we could even have a line of cereals, Tamios. Yes, we could do that. That's almost like you're saying that the video game idea is ludicrous, because that is ludicrous. Do you think cereals is a good no, idea? No, I don't think cereals is no. a good idea. But, but I, I think, think video, video games, games is a, a good very idea. good idea. Yeah. And it's just maddening that we see it with D and D all the time. And going back to the Warhammer comparison, I'm wearing a Warhammer shirt for a reason here. They have like literally bucket loads of games coming out every year. Yeah. And like. And half of them are terrible, to be fair about it, but it still like creates this brand visibility and you get to see something that you might love, orc biplanes, there's an orc plane game recently, you're flying a little plane as an orc. People who like orc planes, that's oh, their yeah. thing. That's I wanna ask jam. you a serious question. Is the reason that we do not see a wider spread and a wider use of Magic's IP, the fact that perhaps Magic's IP is self-limiting? And let me tell you what I mean by that. You know that old magic lore was convoluted and bizarre. Like the old magic lore, when you get into things like, you know, I love Beau Lavar and Commodore Guff and, and all this crazy stuff that was going on, but it was just so drawn out, overly complex, yeah. hard to parse for a lot of people, even magic fans. Super and, and then I would say that a lot of new lore, and I'm sorry, but I have always had this position, is often very simplistic. It especially if you, you use the new walkers as the start of new lore sort of thing. It's, we're gonna start with the Lorwyn Five and it's like, we've got the blue wizard, the red wizard, she's fire, she's angry. The green wizard, she's plants. And yes, there are far more complex things that have been done in some of the magic stories that I could absolutely and have absolutely pointed to, but it is also, I think, fair to say that sticking Jace as a character in Fortnite is like, who would even know or care who Jace is? And there's nothing, he's so bland and one dimensional in so many ways. And there have been some great representations of him, but they can't seem to crack this 
superficial aspect of Magic the Gathering's story in present day, and the old story is just, I mean, imagine a Brothers War Netflix series. We'd go excited for that, but it's like, oh my goodness, some of this stuff is just, they'd have to rework it entirely. Yeah, but the, sometimes you've got to have some sort of faith in the idea that you can tell a good story even in some convoluted mess. Like, I don't know if the old law being this dense nonsense is a limiting factor. Right. I, I guess we have, like, they have done what comic books did, right? Uh, comic books have had, like, DC or Marvel, whichever, pick whichever one, not to go to the details of it, but they were a mess, who is who, there's alternate versions. Yeah. Of and they, they've done things like the mending and like the law in five, they're like, no, the universe got cracked by an evil bad guy and then we've simplified it, we simplified right. it and they keep doing it and we're now at the most simple stage we can be and Magic's done that, but I still, they still go back to those old stories to make movies and stuff about. But is that going to be why, let's just say the Netflix series happens and it's just dull, boring, typical stuff like we're all afraid it's going to be and then you look at a series like Arcane which is deep and complex and is that a fault of the producers or is that a fault of the lore being that of they, the, they, of, they, of they the simplified itself. it? They decided and I understand why they did it and it was largely successful but they intentionally wanted you to see yourself in a lot of these characters. Okay, so, so two counterpoints. One, League of Legends character design is not that deep. Right, League of Legends as a game, everyone is a caricature. Vi is big fist lady who punches things really. So then, how they succeed? How they, they got make... they got good writers. They got good writers. So yeah, like Jinx is like, aha, I'm Harley Quinn with a gun. Like right. all of it is archetypes designed in a very broad strokes to be silhouettes that you can you can identify. Okay, voice so that's, that's new it's magic. The same as magic, exactly. Yeah. And then my other counterpoint is you're talking about like the ludicrousness of Brothers War and can yeah. we get there? Well, Horace Heresy is a contrived mess. Yeah, one. sure, it sounds but, like it. But in the most recent times. We've seen them take the Infinity War, which is a dumb story of a of an uh, an, an old god falling in love with death and then wanting to convince right. her that he's worthwhile by snapping half the universe out of existence, and they turn that into an incredible movie experience that even you liked. I I did like Infinity War. They had to War. change I bits of it. I did not like the, the the follow up at all. But I thought the live, follow up was no good. We live good, in a post Infinity War world. But I thought Infinity World. War was one of the best. But I thought that the uh, End game. He hates End Game. I, it's very strange. I do. I, I I don't hate it. I strongly dislike yeah, it. Yeah, sure. I, I don't hate it. It wasn't hateable. Hateable is is other a few other movies. He, I can think he of. said off camera. I wish it never happened. I didn't. He well, didn't say that. <laughs> I wish it had <laughs> happened better. I wish yeah, it had sure. Better. But my point is, we live in a post Infinity War End Game world where people are okay with things referencing each other and stories yeah. being convoluted and having ensemble casts of like 30, 40, 50 characters. Yeah, they they successfully did that into our movie. So yeah. And, it, and it's they, doable. It's, it's doable. doable. So then it just comes into, can Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro pick the right team to do this, but why are they having so much trouble doing this in all of these other areas? It feels like moving mountains to get one television show after a failed movie. And why are the books not, th this is not a thing that should be a problem. They should be having two books out every six months. It's, it's, it's a machine that, especially with the money that they're making, you can, you can get writers, you can have them writing, you can get artwork for covers, cool little card tie-ins. It could be going out. They at least finally did get it working with the comics because I was not a fan of the IDW comics starring Dak Faden. They weren't bad, but they were very, again, lukewarm. I, I felt it was a, a, a very forgettable journey with no highs or lows for me in my criticism of it, but the boom ones are great. Is it possible then, in the same way you said, is it too convoluted or too simplistic on the event of scale? Is it that maybe magic isn't cool enough? Right, because because Dungeons and Dragons is a is a Hasbro thing, right? And they successfully make video games and more. I think they have more novels than we do. I don't know if they've had novels in recent years. They used to have a lot of novels, right? Mm -hmm. Dragonlance novels and stuff. And D and D is kind of like it's in Stranger Things, and there's like a lot more of it in popular culture where it's kind of and a Critical Role has popularized it to the point that like it's now just super cool and fine. But I actually does Magic think... still have an image problem where they're like a bit scared to be like this show's going to bomb, people are going to poke fun at it. Well, I actually think D and D started to get. Uh, popular as more and more mainstream uh, 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 outlets began to express their love of it. And I think yeah, that Critical okay. Role's popularity is not what popularized Dungeons and Dragons. It's more that Dungeons and Dragons made it so Critical Role could exist. But I think when you start looking at the period where this exploded, everything from like, you know, shows like Community doing Dungeons and Dragons yeah, based yeah. episodes that became just, you know, overnight hits. Yeah, and, yeah. and the list goes on and on. I mean, like Stranger Things, the that they're playing so, Dungeons so, and Dragons, right. all of this stuff. And I think that why don't we ever see, why don't we ever see 
Why was there no episode of Community about the love of Magic the Gathering? There's, there's a one South Park episode. Isn't there, there is, but, but it was not about the love of Magic the Gathering. No, it was, it was using it as a punchline for a joke. Was, yeah, yeah punchline for a joke. So what we need, so, so you, I think you're right. I hadn't thought of this. I think you're right that it's you're finding creative individuals and teams that love this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. the, the, the people making Stranger Things that is a love letter to their youth, including D and D and Nintendo and so on and so on, right? And we see that with Marvel. The people who grew up with Marvel comics are now like, we've got respect for this. We're going to make it and it's work. Yeah. They need to find, not only just hire a good writer, because you can hire one of the best writers in the world. They don't understand any of this stuff and they're not right, going to necessarily sure. do it justice. You need someone who's passionate, in the who's in the creative spaces and passionate about it to come forward in some ways or to find those people to do it. It's hard. Do you, do you think hard. that a lot of it has to do with the fact that Wizards of the Coast holds an iron grip on things? Like you can't put a mana symbol on a coaster and sell it. People do, but it's technically illegal. They own the copyright for that mana symbol. They own the copyright for this. And do you think that that makes it difficult? Because for example, you talk about uh, uh, Harmon Quest. And in that they just said, oh, this is a role playing of adventure similar to, but not actually Dungeons and Dragons. Cause they, they did that at least, I don't know if they, I didn't watch later seasons of it, but I did watch the early ones. And is it that we can't show somebody playing Magic the Gathering because th we would get sued. Do you think that that might be a problem? Let me ask you this yeah. question. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because D&D &D has got, D&D &D in the past has gone like almost open source, right? And when they went to a different yeah. edition, they're like, whatever, hey, Pathfinder exists for that reason, right. right? And Magic has never done that, probably for the right reasons, because they've had a lot of imitators trying to take the crown sure. and they've had to like fight them I know them that's off a danger. Bit. But so, in terms of that, where it's like, you can't say, I don't know if a TV show, like if there was a, a current day episode of Community Wizards or whatever. Wizards would want creative control over it. They'd right, and an it's like you, you can't say play an island, tap, ancestral recall, and they'll be like, no, 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 you can't do well, that. Big Bang Theory has a, I but hate they changed show. all the names. Yeah, I hate yeah, it, yeah. that's what I was going to ask you. So, and I'm sure Rosewater's commented on this, hasn't he? Like that they approached them. I might be imagining this, that Rosewater said they approached them, they just didn't ever get into the talks or whatever. Wow, I don't know. there's incompetence. The, 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 there is, someone might find this. I'm Not sure. Rosewater, but whoever yeah. just let that sit on there's the a, table. There's a blog post somewhere about wh why it didn't happen. But yeah, or maybe it wasn't Rosewater, maybe it was the showrunner for Big Bang Theory. Someone on one end that said why it didn't happen. Yeah. In some way. But they have wizards... Tower of the Coast. It's something really on the Similar, nose, isn't yeah. it? But that's that's but that's the interesting thing. that it's not magic because that would have popularized magic. This is the point. If these things start to show up in popular culture, they start to popularize it. It helps its image, and then you start to get things like D and D expansion. No like one ever done fan films set in the magic multiverse. D and D, Star Trek. You got people building Star Trek sets that look movie quality and filming their own episodes uh, of Star Trek to upload for the joy of the lore. You've got that for D and D. You've got D&D, &D, people will film like shows just for YouTube of them playing D&D &D, or in the D&D &D world or they travel into the D&D &D world or all kinds of variations. No one has ever, we've got all, no one has ever done like a fan-made Magic the Gathering is that content. So, so on one end, Star Trek is its own self-contained world that sure. is very captivating and has a lot of reasons that people buy into it so heavily, as you know, as a massive Star Trek fan. Indiana Jones film fan films. Yeah, but yeah, sure, sure. And then D&D is this creative outlet. And the, is it that magic is just a game and the law isn't good enough? <laughs> well, that goes back to my question, but let me also but ask- you can improve the law through these things. They let me can, also can, ask you this. It. I thought, I wonder if at this point, between me and the connections I know, in terms of I know people who, who now can do movie level special effects, I know people, you know, in, L in LA, it's called yeah. Game Nights, yes. Yeah, I know yeah. them, and, and but I know they're, yes, Tinseltown. You're going to Tinseltown, Toast. Yeah. Uh, uh, but Prof does Tinseltown. <laughs> right, well basically I thought, what if I wanted to get cosplayers, writers, special effects people, and film things like 15 minute little episodes set in Magic's lore that were serious, not like office hours or anything, but like that was actually, we have sets, we have things. Is office hours the closest we've ever had to this? Oh my God, that's sad. And would Wizard cease and desist you the moment you got serious? That, that was my question is, is because <laughs> Star Trek had that problem when they were doing uh, yeah. uh, one of them. They were like, you can't do this. And they're like, we're not Dude, doing it for profit. This is, this is interesting. So Games Workshop just bought all the animators off YouTube. Right. There was like four or five big ones. A start is just huge. It had like 60 million views or something. And yeah. It was a really incredible quality animation. The Corridor Crew guy said it's the best animation they've ever seen one person make. It was amazing. And they bought it and said, we want to put Astartes onto our behind a paywall premium Warhammer Plus TV thing. Right. And they did that to three or four creators. The guys are making Exodite and stuff, if you want to look this up. So Astartes, Exodite, and a few others. Then there was um, uh, rumors going around and some of the exact things announced. I'm not 100% sure on it right here. 
But people were like, okay, I'm going to stop making my content now. One thing called Emperor's Text to Speech, a comedy show mm. about the world of Warhammer, they did a public statement saying, with them being bought out and people getting letters about they can't use the intellectual yeah. property, I'm going to stop making this. Sure. People were livid. So Games Workshop have done what you're describing. And people said it was a blunder because... If anything, I started in 60 million views or 600 million views, right. whatever it was. It was the best advertising they've ever had. Right. It was made for free by a passionate the fan. The best advertising they ever had made for free. And so let's imagine I go and I decide I want to do Weatherlight New Voyages to ferry uh, uh, takes Joyra out into the multiverse. You're doing a Star Trek show in Magic. And, and, and something like that. And it's like something where I, I, I can crowdfund it and it's going to be, I mean, like something like that would be like, what, $75,000 an episode to like pay everybody and, and and do it real. But it's like, okay, we're gonna do this. And and like like they do a cease and desist. And it's like, I'm literally crowdfunding advertisements for your show. You know, and I've never really heard of them doing anything like that. No, I don't think they have. No, but you'd but, also, you reach out to them and be like, do you want- Well, they don't. <laughs> I also think it coming from me would be a problem. But, but I, yes. I, I'm scared of what's happened. So this thing, I'm talking about Games Workshop doing really good with their IP. Right. But let's talk about the, the, the dark side of this. What they are doing by ceasing and desisting people and buying them up kind of sets a precedent on YouTube. And people are like, what if other companies start doing this? Right. We're talking about how, why hasn't this happened? Well, it might start to happen. It's quashed immediately as these companies all start to do the same thing. So they've got to protect their- like you said, you can't put a, a mana symbol on a coaster. It kind of makes sense that you can't. Right, right. So there you go, yeah. So yeah, we didn't come to a conclusion. We talked about some stuff we'd like to see. It's much like the Magic the Gathering TV series is about to uh, do for us. Do you really think what it's going to come man? out? What if really it's like, okay, it's gonna, you really, he, they, coming they said out. He, recorded, he said he recorded lines. So that's that's further than we've ever gotten. Yeah, yeah. He said he recorded lines, or he said he's so, going to so record lines. The ex I mean, we could... <sighs> Maybe we get the clip here or I'll try and paraphrase. Greetings, Magic fans. I'm Brandon Routh, and I play Gideon in the upcoming Magic the Gathering animated series coming to Netflix in 2022. Like, it, it, is, it was in one of the streams, and then Brandon Ruth comes on, he's on his phone, looking up at him at a weird angle, because it's, it's pandemic times, like, hi, I'm Brandon Ruth, you might know me as Superman, and I'm playing Gideon in the new show on Netflix. And they're like, ooh, and we moved on. I think it was in the same one where we got Mark Rosewater in the spacesuit talking about um, the new unset. Well, I'm dressed in a silly costume, so we know what that means. Yes! It's time for another- <laughs> Which was also was one. delayed. Yeah. Well, Much like the Magic yeah. the Gathering TV show, the unset <laughs> had to get delayed. A great, a great precedent. A great yeah, precedent. Yeah, so I think it will happen. Well, actually, no, I don't. I don't really have much. This is the other thing. I have no confidence in it. Right. Right? Do you have any confidence that it's going to I even don't come have out? confidence that Arena's going to continue. <laughs> I, I'm not joking. When you look at Duels of the Planeswalkers, it's bad. It's a bad. Uh, I, track I feel like record. they're just one day going to go, eh. Yeah, don't worry, uh, here's MTG, whatever the next thing is. Right. That's skin to look on like the TV show. And all the characters, have, all the cards are actually just stills from the TV show. They're gonna do Magic the Gathering in the metaverse. If you wanna hear more about that, tune next week when we talk about NFTs. <laughs> the future's brighter than we make it sound, Brian. I'm sure yeah. of it, I'm sure of it. <laughs>